Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. And back by popular demand is my curly hair. Don't expect it all the time, but oh my goodness, the last video where I wore curly hair, I think I received more comments on my hair than on anything else in the video. I'll do it when I can, but it's a lot of work, so it's not gonna be done all the time. If you have been watching this channel for quite some time, you probably know my investing style. I am an indexer. I love indexing. When I was younger, I actually thought I could beat the market and I would pick stocks. I would pour over company financials. I would read their annual reports. Heck, I would even call companies for additional information. I was hell bent on being the next Warren Buffett. And you know what? I never beat the market. I picked some winners, I picked some losers, but for the most part, the stocks I picked actually just kept pace with the market. I wasn't picking winners left and right. I was just doing okay. And so with some time, probably too much time, the writings of Jack Bogle convinced me that I was nothing but average. So I became a Boglehead. So for the past 15 years or so, I've just been buying the index and capturing the market return. And you know what? That market return has been wonderful. Yes, I still do have some individual stocks, but that's just fun money more than anything else. I have been sold on this index investing style. It's what I believe in with my whole heart. And I actually have a couple friends who are active managers and oh, we get in some heated debates. They think they are 100% right and that active investing is the way to go. And I think I am 100% right and there is no middle ground for us. There are some times when I listen to them talk and I'm like, wow, you actually think that. You are so wrong and I'm sure they think the same about me. But I am right on this one. Seriously, I am so right. Well, actually Jack Bogle is right and we're all just riding his coattails, but seriously, he's right. The biggest argument you hear from active managers or proponents of actively managed funds is that these funds really excel during bear markets. They think, sure, during those upswings, during those bull markets, when everything is going up, it's really easy for index funds to come out ahead with their low fee structure. But during those market downturns, that's when actively managed funds really shine by protecting your downside. And we've all heard Warren Buffett's infamous words about investing. Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Shielding yourself from market downturns is what we all wanna do, obviously. And if that's where actively managed funds truly shine, maybe they're worth investing in. And intuitively, it makes sense. If there's someone at the helm directing the ship, perhaps they can better spot where to go when there's market turmoil. Perhaps they can keep you out of the worst of the storm. Well, we just came off the longest bull market in history and entered into bear market territory. So actively managed funds really should be the all-stars this year. Not that I'm expecting them to boast positive returns because the markets are really down everywhere, but they should be down less than the overall market. And we are gonna use the S&P 500 as a comparison. At the time of this filming, the S&P 500 is down 21.61% for the year. So that's the benchmark. First, I'm gonna go over some of the best performing actively managed funds of the past decade. I actually went over them in this video, and so now we're gonna see how they've performed in this year, 2022, with this market downturn. The first fund is Fidelity Growth, ticker symbol FDGRX. Year to date, it is down about 33%. Next, we have Fidelity OTC Portfolio, ticker symbol F-O-C-P-X. Year to date, it's down about 32%. Then we have Fidelity Select Software and IT, ticker F-S-C-S-X. Year to date, it's down about 30%. And finally, we have the T. Rowe Price Health and Sciences Fund, ticker P-R-H-S-X, down 21%. This one actually beats the S&P by just a hair, but you are still paying higher fees than a simple passive index. So once you factor that in, the index actually comes out ahead. 
So looking at four of the best performing actively managed funds of the past decade, only one of them is actually in line with the S&P 500, but you can't significantly say that any of them are beating the index. I also found a list of some of the best performing actively managed funds as compiled by Investors Business Daily. They offer up five funds in every single category, but I'm only gonna look at the ones that benchmark against the S&P 500. Rather than go through all of them one by one and make this video insanely long, I will just show you some of their performances year to date. You might see a trend. None of them are beating the S&P 500. Some are relatively in close in line with it. Some are performing worse, and in some instances, much worse. One last place to check, Vanguard, because I love them. As I mentioned, I'm a bogglehead, and it's true love. When you get to their actively managed fund page, you see this statement. Over the past 10 years, 86% of our actively managed funds perform better than their peer group averages. Please note the asterisks. Scrolling down to the bottom, you will see that they are using the Lipper rating system, comparing actively managed funds. That means they are comparing to other actively managed funds, peer funds, as they did state. But I just don't want anybody reading that statement and thinking that 86% of their actively managed funds are beating the index. That is not the case. They are beating other actively managed funds, not the index. Of course, that's great news for their actively managed funds. They're performing better than other actively managed funds, but it's probably largely attributed to their low fee structure because even as far as actively managed funds go, Vanguard has lower fees than many companies in the industry. Management fees really do drag down a portfolio's performance and Fidelity and Vanguard have some of the lowest in the industry. And you see here that their actively managed funds that are benchmarked to the S&P 500 are following a similar trend. They are following close to the overall index or they're performing worse. For the typical person, indexing is the way to go. I'm not saying that it's impossible to beat the market. It's possible, it's just not probable. In this video, I do discuss some of the best actively managed performing funds of all times, and yes, they did beat the market, but most actively managed funds do not beat the market. At any given time, there are seven to 8,000 funds in existence. So obviously there are some funds beating the market at any given time, but most aren't even in a bear market. So as far as that statement that actively managed funds outperform the index funds in a bear market, that's a bunch of baloney, malarkey, hogwash, bullshit. <laughs> As an investor, your presumption should be that passive will beat active. And if you make that presumption for almost everywhere in the world, asset class and time period, you will be vindicated. 80% of all actively managed US stock mutual funds underperformed their benchmark in 2021, the third worst showing in the past two decades, according to SPIVA, research that measures actively managed funds against their relevant index benchmark worldwide. Over a 10 year period, 83% of all actively managed large cap funds underperformed the S&P 500. That means in 83% of cases, people would have simply been better off just buying the index. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to invest in a way that stacks the odds against me. I like to stack the deck in my favor whenever I can. I don't want to put in more work just to come out behind. And even if you do select a fund that outperforms the index one year, there's no guarantee that it will do that in future years. Spiva actually has research on many of the different fund categories and what percent of them underperform their relative index over one, three, five, and 10 year time horizons. I will put a link to their research down below if you are curious to check it out. Just a warning, rarely is it pretty for the actively managed funds. At the end of the day, statistically speaking, there doesn't seem to be a great rise in the number of actively managed funds outperforming the market in either a bear market or a bull market, according to a recent study done by Bank of America. No matter what the conditions, the ratio stays fairly constant. 
And it's not hard to see why. Being a fund manager is an incredibly stressful job. If you are managing a fund that is benchmarked to the S&P 500, with every investment choice you make, you are putting your career at risk. If you keep pace with the index, you're probably safe. You beat the index, you're dubbed a hero. You fall behind the index, you're hated, and you likely lose your job. That's a big risk. So more often than not, it's probably safest to simply hug the index. Your investors will be happy enough and you will still have a job. It's worth noting that not all managed funds are pegged to the S&P 500. The S&P 500, that large cap arena, is one of the most difficult areas to outperform in. There is some evidence that managers of small cap funds and emerging market funds are better able to spot hidden gems and are thus more likely to beat the index that they are tied to. So if you truly are interested in actively managed funds, maybe this is an area that you could look into. And there are some studies that indicate that hedge funds, those notoriously exclusive mutual funds that are hard to get into, do exactly what active managers say they can do. They perform better than a plain old vanilla index fund when the market is volatile. But on the flip side, they tend to have a more mediocre performance when the times are good with the market. It's worth mentioning that many hedge funds have very high entry limits. I'm talking seven, eight figures. 2% annual fees and performance fees for when the fund does well, which ultimately drags down your return quite a bit. The larger the fund fees, the more drag you feel as an investor, because no matter how the fund performs, no matter what the market conditions are, those managers are going to collect their fee. And many of these managers are incredibly brilliant people, but consistently beating the market is next to impossible to do. It's not impossible, impossible's here, it's just right next to it. There might be an elusive few who do, but that is not the norm. Study after study show that if you simply do passive investing, you will come out ahead. So like I said, stack the deck in your favor whenever possible. So I'm gonna ask, what type of investment style do you guys prefer? Do you do more active? Do you do more passive? I think you know where my preference lies. That's gonna do it for me on this one. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye. Didn't really want to give it to a 16 year old. Rude. But you know what? That market return, it's been wonderful. The biggest argument you hear. <laughs> 500 in this. One last place to. <laughs> that means they are comparing to bunch funds that have beat the market. And, oh, and they do beat the market. But most do not beat the market. And just, even if you do select a fund that does beat the index one year, there's no guarantee that it continues to do that in years to come. You're probably safe. If you beat the index, you're dubbed a hero. If you fail, if you fall miserably behind, you're hated and you could lose your job, you are putting your career at risk. Whisk. Managers of small, exclusive mutual funds. <laughs>